Hi guys. Okay, so uh, let's look at how to make mind maps. Now, this is an extra credit assignment for my class and you can be as creative, as artistic, as colorful as you like, but I'm just going to show you how to create very simple, you know, mind maps, which are also called flowchart or concept maps. Okay, so here we are going to build a mind map on matter. What do we know about matter? So matter is anything that has mass, and occupy space. So what do you know about mass? The mass is basically the weight. And how do you measure weight? Weight is actually uh, measured on the weighing machine. And the units that we use are milligrams, grams, kilograms, you know, generally in our labs. Okay, next is what about volume? Volume mass is also going to occupy some space, which is measured in volume. And uh, what are the units for volume? Volume units are milliliters, liters, you know, commonly, you commonly we use these uh, terms in our labs. Okay, so that's one piece. Next is what are the other things that you know about matter? Matter is um, solid. The three states of matter are solids, liquids, Okay, and gases. These are the three states of matter. So we covered that in one of our previous lectures. I'm not going to go in much detail here, but you are free to, you know, post more information on this. That it, the, 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 the solids have very definite shape. So you can just, you know, draw something here or post a picture of a solid as an example. And it's very important. Whenever you create a mind map, you should create some kind of a, you know, it's a visual, it has a visual appeal to it. So it's okay to bring in some pictures. Okay. Next is for the liquids, they are mobile. So the particles do not have much attraction in them and they kind of like move, but the gas particles are very far away. So they are very far away and the, 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 the amount of attraction they have is the least. And then you can branch off even further. Solids have a definite shape. Liquids take the shape of the container. Gases also take the shape of container. Indefinite volume in the case of gases, definite volume in the case of liquids and a very definite volume in the case of solids, okay? So this is one piece. Next, we are going to now move further into what are the two broad categories of matter. One is we classify the matter into two very broad categories and that is as pure substance and the other is um, as a pure substance, pure substance and as mixtures. Okay, so what is a pure substance and what is a mixture? Mixture, as you can say, the name suggests mixture means it will have some impurities. And pure substance means no impurities. So let's just put it here in a simpler terms. Um, no impurities, no impurities. And mixtures is made up of two or more substances, two or more substances that are, um, sorry, two or more substances that are just mixed, okay? Just mixed. And mix, mixed means it's just a physical, you know, it's a physical like a state. Mixed, you know, uh, without any chemical composition or without any chemical change or chemical reaction, okay? So now look at the pure substances. This is important. Now the pure substances, what are pure? There are two types of pure substances. One is elements and the other is compounds. So let us look at the difference between the two. So one is the elements and the other is compounds. So what are elements and what are compounds? So here we have the elements, pure substances. Pure substances means that they are made up of only one type of particles, one type of particles, only one type. And then the elements are, sorry, elements are, uh, are made up of only one type of particles, which are called, um, the smallest particles is called atoms. Okay, so here, the smallest particle of elements is called atoms. And the smallest particle of the compounds is called molecules. Okay, so what are what is the difference between the atoms and molecules? Atoms is just one 
kind of uh, you know particles which has a very specific you know uh, uh, physical properties and chemical properties and and it has a very specific atomic number and the mass number and and those those things but molecules are when two or more atoms chemically combine so you see i'm not writing any long sentences so I'm just writing a very basic things, you know, that I need very, very focused. So this is all like, you know, technical writing also very focused. So when two or more atoms are chemically combined, they form molecules. Now we, we can highlight these if we want. So these are molecules. You can highlight this like this way or whichever way you like, you know, you can use as many colors as you want or, you know, pictures, doesn't matter. It's all, it's all very creative effort. Okay, so let's look at some of the examples. So these concept maps are of no use unless and until you bring in some, you know, specific examples or you bring in the formulas and, you know, those things. So atoms, look at the example of atoms. So here you have, let us say, copper. Okay, so copper is going to be made up of only one type of atoms, only one type. Okay, let us say you have, um, let us say you have, let me change it, um, let me change this, iron. Okay, iron is going to be made of only one type of iron atoms, only one type. Okay, all of them look the same. Let us say you have, um, let's say, um, silver. I, I, I should have made this as a silver. Let me put this just because of the color. Okay, so let us say silver only made up of one type and let's say gold. Gold will also be made up of only one type. So this is gold, AU, and this is made up of only one type of particles. You see that? Okay, and then similarly, let's get aluminum, aluminum foil, aluminum, only one type. Okay. Okay, so this is one piece. Next, let's look at the molecules. What's the story with them? So here is the molecules which are, um, sorry, which are in this case, let us say different examples. So these are the examples here, EXP, and this is the examples here. You know, ideally these lines, there is a question they are like connected with a question, but I know it can get very deep, you know, as far as the thinking is concerned, but as far as you can still see that these concepts are all creative, uh, connected, you know, that's, that's what matters. Okay, so here is hydrogen and two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. So here is, let us say, uh, I'm going to change the colors. Let's say hydrogen is, hydrogen is H2 and oxygen is Oh, so what does this mean? So here is this oxygen atom and these are the two hydrogen atoms. Okay, so this is how, this is all chemically connected. So this is of, um, um, of, um, um, of water, any H2. Let's look at sodium chloride. So Na and like, uh, this is uh, Cl, chlorine. So here is your Na atom, atom of sodium, and this is the atom of chlorine. Again, they are chemically combined. Okay, let's look at another example of um, carbon tetrachloride. So here is this carbon, and here is this chlorine. Oh, sorry, I'm going to just put it in the other way. I don't know, carbon, and let us say this is the chlorine, Cl4. So here you will have... Um, carbon in the middle. This is one atom of carbon. And then comes the chlorines, which are one, two, three, and four. Okay, so you see, they are all combined in a very definite ratio. And they, they with that definite ratio, there is a very specific, uh, you know, quality that is associated with it. Now, for example, I'm going to show you one, you know, um, one situation where sodium, sodium, sodium is flammable. That is why you put flammable sodium in oil. Okay, you put flammable sodium under oil so that it doesn't catch any fire. On the other hand, you have chlorine, which is a greenish green gas, 
okay but it's very poisonous toxic so here is this solid flammable solid sodium and here is your chlorine which is very toxic but when these two are chemically combined they produce NaCl and this NaCl is solid and it's healthy it doesn't kill us so you see anytime there is a chemical change um, occurs um, of course a molecule and uh, atoms can also form but they will have their own identity uh, own specific properties physical properties and chemical properties so the physical property of sodium is going to be uh, i mean the physical property of sodium is is that it is uh, uh sorry I, why am i making this <laughs> the physical property of sodium is that it is soft and it is um, like a, like you use a tweezers to plug the sodium out from the you know from the oil in, in where it's placed so this sodium is um, is a very like a very like a reactive you know if you dump it in water it's going to shh, it's going to make that type of noise okay and then it's going to liberate hydrogen gas and combine with water produce a new thing called sodium hydroxide so this sodium has its own very unique properties chlorine has a very unique property that it is toxic it is a green it's gaseous state but once these two combine they form a new substance and this new substance is white color is white in color and it is um you know healthy actually so this is white color and it is solid and it is non-toxic you know everything pretty much can be toxic but if you take it in the right amount so anyway so this was the concept of molecules concept of atoms and atoms and molecules both of them are going to have physical properties okay they will have physical and they will have chemical properties both atoms and molecules so what are the physical properties physical properties as we discussed in the previous videos and the chemical properties so physical properties are the properties that um sorry which we which we see which we which we we understand the matter using our five senses looks feel taste you know smell touch and the sound Okay, so that's physical. Besides that, other physical properties are also whether it's a good conductor of electricity or bad conductor of electricity. You know, what is it? it is it a, a good conductor or a bad conductor? Or uh, what is a boiling point? What is a melting point? What's the density? You know, and then there is specific heat, there is solubility, and then there's so many others. Okay, so those are very basic physical properties. Chemical properties are how does a substance react? You know, so every element will have a very specific physical properties and every element will have the chemical properties also. OK, so elements are, you know, pure substances which are made up of only one type of particles called atoms. Compounds are also pure substances, but they are made up of uh, one type of particles called the molecules. Okay, now what is the difference between a mixture now and the compounds? Compounds, they are chemically combined. Okay, as we see that they are chemically combined, but mixtures, they are just mixed, mixed. So that means it is just a physically mixed. It is just a, a physical phenomena, but it is not chemically combined and not chemically combined. Not chemically combined. So in other words, that you can get the individual components out through the physical processes. Okay, so you can separate the mixtures. Now there are two types of mixtures. One is the homogeneous mixture, and the other is the heterogeneous mixture. So the two types, and I don't have the space, so I'm going to just do it here. So one is the homogeneous. Homogeneous. Homogeneous are homo. Homo means look as one look as one okay and the heterogeneous mixtures are those in which you can see the individual components so heterogeneous heterogeneous so you see how i'm creating this mind maps i'm only writing one one word but it has a very powerful you know appeal in as far as uh, understanding the concepts like all in one place how are they connected okay so here the individual components can be seen so individual i'm going to put this in a different color 
individual individual components individual components can be seen you know by the naked eye now what are the examples of the homogeneous mixture and the heterogeneous mixture homogeneous mixture for example could be like sand like salt sorry salt and water water is h2o salt and water these once salt see salt is white in color right and you put it in water it vanishes and it forms a nice clear solution so this solution yes it's a uh, you know, it's a solution of salt, salt water, uh, but you can't see the salt, but it doesn't mean it's not there, but you can separate the salt through uh, evaporation process. So an evaporation is, um, uh, is, a, is, a, is a physical phenomena, you know, it's a physical process. And we discussed this in much detail in the previous, uh, you know, uh, uh, videos. However, you look at the heterogeneous mixtures. Now heterogeneous mixtures, for example, salt, plus water, fine, this is nice clear solution. Now you add some, some wood, wood pieces, like wood shavings, okay? And you can add some sand, okay? And you can add some iron, Fe, iron, iron pieces to it. So this kind of makes it very, like you can clearly see, you may not see salt and water, but you can see wood shavings, you can see the sand, you can see the iron and so forth. So here, how, is, how does it look like? So let us say um, this is one, the individual components can be seen. So two, and I'm going to just make it like three and four, whatever the components are, they can be seen. So imagine, uh, uh, Imagine, um, you know, um, a, 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 a container, you know, a box containing like a lots of candies, you know, so that is a heterogeneous mixture. You can see all these individual, you know, components and it doesn't matter. Maybe a few components are more than the other, but it doesn't matter. As far as you can see the individual components or as many of the individual components as is possible, that is the heterogeneous mixture. So heterogeneous mixture looks like this, but homogeneous mixture, it is, a, it is like, let's put it in the solution and it's all one, okay? And it's all transparent solution. So I can't even like, you know, draw this. So here, this is a, all looks like one. Okay, so you can see that the individual components, okay? So anyway, so this is one example of drawing the mind maps like here. So showing them the, with the connections and the arrows, you know, this thing. And uh, I have some examples on my Instagram of the students who have already made very interesting mind maps that I'm kind of showcasing and you can see them uh, when you get a chance. But, you know, I highly encourage you to be creative and expressive and uh, you know the main thing is the connectivity as far as you're showing the right connectivity that's what matters all right so that's all for now and um, thank you for watching bye-bye